What's good? Here are a couple things I think boxing can learn from MMA. This is mostly going to be from UFC, but I do like the way Bellator and the PFL does tournaments, and I think that's worked very well in boxing with the World Boxing Super Series, and we've gotten a couple stars off that. Josh Taylor, Usek, Callum Smith, and we've gotten some damn good fights. Uh, Inouye versus uh, Nonito Donaire, Josh Taylor versus versus um, Pro Gray. We got some good fights, and they're, they're good for the sport. They're good for both sports. So I hope boxing keeps doing that. I hope the World Boxing Super Series keeps going, and that some big stars could be become a part of it soon. So first thing, I think MMA handles weight classes a lot better. They only have eight weight classes. You know how many weight classes there are on boxing? 17. 105 to 200 plus. That is too many weight classes. And they're talking about bridger weight from cruiserweight to heavyweight. Do we really need another weight class, guys? I will say I don't like how there's a limit in heavyweight in MMA. 265. I think heavyweight has traditionally been uh, there's no limit. And I think that's the way it should be. That way you find out who's the biggest and the baddest. And to a certain point, uh, the the advantage becomes no. Like you won't see Tyson Fury going over 260. That after, after a certain point, there's not much advantage to that. I mean, if Andy Reese had to make 265 for his rematch against Joshua... He would have been in a lot better shape, but that's up to the fighters. I, I, I know I kind of made the case for, for a limit at heavyweight, but I mean, there are bigger guys. There are guys who, are, who can't, who really can't make 265. Uh, that's a small portion of society, but I, I think they should have the option to, to compete. And it's always the biggest and the baddest, so... You should have your chance to compete into in, in the sport. But other than that, besides that they change the weight classes, so a guy at 155 is a lightweight, it's really confusing. <laughs> but other than those two things, I really like that there's only weight classes, and for the most part, there's only one champion per weight class. That's because different organizations have their own belt. So then we get to the problem with that. Because there's a Bellator champion, there's a PFL champion, there's a UFC champion, but and that's different organizations. There's not one MMA champion, so that'd be like the WBC, WBO, WIBF. So the, the, it it kind of knows uh, it kind of cancels itself out because there are multiple champion per weight class, but there aren't there there are only one champion in each uh, in each organization at least at the very least they get that but yeah 17 18 now that's too many weight classes and really really hard for for someone coming into the sport to follow why is 105 a division 108 112 four pounds four pounds to the next weight class that that is too much they have it 125, 135, 145, 155, so 10 pounds. That, that's a weight class. That's a weight class right there. So, yeah, it, it, there's too, too many, too many. I'm, gonna, I'm done with that point. Another point I want to make is that the, the UFC has some big stars that have double-digit losses. So one of their biggest stars right now is... Jorge Masvidal, he has, let me see, I wrote some notes, 14 losses, 14 losses, he sold, uh, he, he had the most selling pay-per-view of last year, over a million buys, over a million buys, a guy with 14 losses, he faced a champion, got dominated, but still, he had, I think he probably had 13 losses then, last year, but when have you seen a guy, when's the last time, I'll, say, I'll ask this, and this is a real question because I don't know the answer. When is the last time a guy with double digit, lo, double digit losses headlined a pay-per-view in the main event, main event to the pay-per-view? When was that? 
who is a star right now? Who is a star in boxing right now with double digit losses? I, I can't name any. Man, I'm trying. Um, that, that's like a guy like Gabe Rosado. Uh, that, that's like a guy like Gabe Rosado being in the main event of a pay per view. I mean, and being legitimately a pay per view star and people excited to see it. Yeah, they could make Canelo versus versus Gabe Rosado a pay per view, and it, I might do well because of Canelo, but that wouldn't get people excited. When Masvidal faced Usman, people were excited, and it was on short notice and all that. But because this guy's a star, uh, Cowboy Cerrone faced Conor McGregor last year. He had 14 losses, now has 15 because he got dominated in 40 seconds. But he main evented a pay-per-view against the biggest star in the history of the sport. When, when has that happened? And that, and that pay-per-view becomes successful. Another star, Nate Diaz, has 12 losses. A guy that people want to put in a trilogy with the biggest star in the company. Uh, Anthony P Pettis has 10 losses, a guy that just left the UFC, but it was a big deal that he signed with the, with the uh, PFL, another one, Alistair Over Overeem, 18 losses, 14 of which were by KO, but people are still excited when he fights, people still want to see him fight, they don't call them bums, they, they, don't, they don't do what we do in boxing, write, write someone off. Just by just because they lost one fight, these guys are legitimate stars, and they have double-digit losses. Let's support our fighters, and you know why they have so many losses? It's because they actually fight each other. This was not uncommon in the sport of boxing in the past. Guys retired with 16, 18, 20 losses. Sugar Ray Robinson, I believe, has 19 losses. Roberto Duran, I think, has 16 losses. But that's what happens when you fight everybody that you can fight. You fight in different countries. You fight different styles that may trouble you. Let's get the fights made and let's support guys even after they lose because they aren't done just because they lose. I was watching the fight, uh, Ryan Garcia versus Luke Campbell, and... I was watching with someone and they said, oh, Luke Campbell already has three losses. Like, what do you mean? Already has three losses. Only three losses. That's not even, that's not even a bad record to have, especially consider, considering the guys that he's lost to. Lomachenko and Linares and ah, that English guy, um, his name slips my mind, but... He, he's, not, he's not a chump either, and he went back to beat him. So there's no shame in Luke Campbell's losses because he fell short against some tough guys. He challenged, him, he challenged himself and got a payday for those fights. So th there's nothing wrong with losses. Can, can we get this Mayweather ideology out of our mind? The O is okay if it goes. So to, to my second to last Really, my last point is that fights get made. Everybody fights everybody. The, the, fa the fights that fans want to see usually get made, be with the exception of uh, Khabib versus Ferguson, which they call it the, the cursed fight. They try to make it five times, but some freak accidents happen. Uh, Ferguson lost this year and then got dominated again. COVID. And that fight would have happened this year, but COVID. So that's how cursed that fight is. But other than that, the fights get made and they stack their cards. After the last pay-per-view, UFC 256, people were elated on the card. They understand that they're charging 65 70 now for their cards, so they stack them. When's the last good or great? When's the last when's the last pay-per-view that you, you were talking not just about the main event, but two or three fights on the undercard. I could think of Mayweather Canelo where Danny Garcia and Matisse fight and that outshined them. Um, that's 2013. 2013, yeah, yeah, two, I was going to say maybe 14. 2013, that's seven years ago where I remember 
a great card. And that's just two fights. I remember Carlos Molina versus uh, Ishe Smith was on that card, and that was the worst fight I've ever seen. But that, that shouldn't have been on the... That fight would not be on, an, on a pay-per-view undercard in the UFC, let me tell you. And they both guys would have been demanded, uh, reprimanded for their performance because they, they get bonuses for knockouts, for fight of the night. They get knockouts for stuff like that. So they have the incentive on fighting in an exciting, fan-friendly fashion. But the card thing really matters. And that, uh, that might be a big portion why boxing pay-per-view, for the most part, it aren't happening anymore. But... Let's see, the last pay-per-view was Spence Garcia. Tell me who fought. Um, that tall guy, uh, I can't name him, that 6'6", freaking welterweight, towering inferno fought. But he's still a prospect, he's not a star. So, people paid $70 to watch that fight. And the main event was okay. But no one came out of the pay-per-view saying, yeah, that was, I got my money's worth. The fight was okay. I know Spence was coming back from the car accident, but that then that shouldn't have been that shouldn't have been a pay per view pay per view main event. When tell me, I I because I can't think of one. When was the last stacked card on a pay per view where you remember being being happy on the whole card? Uh, I remember people were happy for Fury Wilder too, but can you name? Can you name a fight? I can. <laughs> I think it was Charles Martin versus Gerald Washington. Is that, if I'm not mistaken, that's not a pay-per-view undercard fight. Those guys have no business fighting on a pay-per-view of one of the biggest fights of the year. That should not happen. So, uh, Wish Boxing adopted that. Maybe have a good fight, good couple good fights on an undercard. So, that would be nice. And the last thing, and this is not really a point, and I don't see this getting fixed, is they, the the women are exciting. I'll say this, I'll pick boxing over MMA any day, but women MMA, I'll pick over boxing any day. And people want to say, oh, it's because of the shorts and the bra. I don't think so. The fights are actually exciting. The fight of the year, last year, was two women, Wei Li versus Joanna. That was a great fight, by the way, if you haven't watched it. Uh, check it out, I recommend it. So, the, the women could fight, guys, and they're exciting, they give good fights, they have knockout power. Women in boxing don't have knockout power, so it's interesting. Uh, all the MMA people want to fight boxers, call out boxers. I just saw Henry Cejudo call out Ryan Garcia. Why? Because he wants that boxing money. McGregor went to boxing. I know we get some exceptions. Which I may cover my channel a bit later. But it's funny with the women. Women boxers go to MMA. Uh, Heather Hardy. Now Clarissa Shields. Who might be the best women's boxer of all time already. So she's going to, and she's going to MMA in the PFL. She signed already. I'm really actually kind of looking forward to seeing her fight. <laughs> In, in the in the cage. I never watched her fight in boxing, but I am fascinated by the prospect of seeing her fight in a cage. So, um, that's not really a point. I don't see women's boxing getting any better, creating stars, or even giving good fights, but that's something they do a lot better than boxing, and at least in that aspect, MMA, I think, will probably always be better than boxing. Uh, the the women's with the w women divisions so yeah that's my video a couple things i think M um, boxing can learn from the sport of mma so what do you guys think uh what do you guys think about that so thanks everyone for watching peace